God. When you think about how God has blessed you, when you think about how God has prospered you, when you think about how God has healed you, when you think about how God has taken you from where you are to where He wants you to be, when you think about how God is so good in your life, you can't help but turn to God. Hallelujah. You can't help but return to the Lord. Well, you know, what does Christmas mean to you? And so, uh, I thank God for the Bible because His Word actually tells us what Christmas is all about. And so today, I want us to look at the Scriptures once again. It's always good to read the Scriptures and look at what God is saying to us this season. So let's look to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. Uh, we'll see the, this Christmas story from verse 8 down to 20. And here's what it says. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying God and, and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. And God, we pray that you would speak into our lives through your word, Lord, that we may understand the meaning of Christmas and, Lord, what, it's, what this uh, season is all about. And, Lord, we pray that you would uh, let your word come forth, let it be rooted in our hearts, that we can apply it in our daily life, especially during this season. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, uh, let me share with you some thoughts on, on Christmas. You can see in this Christmas story, I mean, they had, they had a wonderful uh, um, mime or what, whatever you would call that they did last night. They did this Christmas story, you know, uh, silhouette. And uh, it was beautiful. And... Uh, and so I just wanted to be able to share a little bit about, from what we've seen in the Word of God, some thoughts on, on Christmas, what it really means to us. You know, during that time, there was no, no uh, Christmas lights and all the things. It was just, it just happened in, the, in a dark uh, a night uh, out in the fields where the shepherds were tending their flock. If you've ever been to Israel... Uh, it's just dark in those areas. I mean, there's no lights there. There's no uh, posts, uh, lamp posts or anything. They're just in the fields. And so you can imagine the only light that they'd probably seen was that bright light that came and the glory of God when God spoke, uh, uh, when the angel spoke and uh, proclaimed the good news. So uh, let me just share with you some thoughts. First of all, Christmas is a time for giving. It's a time for giving. Um, you know, God um, sent His Son, Jesus Christ. When, when those shepherds were, were attending their flock, the words of the angel uh, just proclaimed, uh, they were told that a Savior was coming into the world. And the child, uh, Jesus, was born in Bethlehem. It was not an ordinary boy. It was not an ordinary child. Uh, this is proven by the angelic, announcements given by the, uh, the, the angel. And, um, and, and the thing is, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he was literally God in the flesh, in human flesh. He was God in the human flesh. And uh, all through his life, 
Jesus proved who he was. I mean, he, he taught like no other man. He performed miracles that nobody could duplicate. Uh, he healed, he preached, he, he loved, he reached out. His life was one miraculous event after the other. But you know what? None of these things qualifies him to be a savior. I mean, he was able to do that, but that's not what qualifies him to be a savior. For him to be a savior, he had to be given up. That's why the Bible says it, uh, God gave his only begotten son. It didn't say God sent his son. So the Lord didn't just send a son, he gave up his son. And Jesus Christ gave up his life. God uh, gave his son to die on the cross. You know, he lived among men, died on the cross so that he could pay for our sins, to forgive us and to pay for the debt of our sin in our lives and obviously uh, save us from uh, eternity of hell, right? I mean, being able to uh, save us from that. That's what God did. He, he, he gave up his only son. It's that we might have the opportunity to be saved from an eternity of hell, in hell. And so, friends, thank God for the greatest gift. Amen? The time, this is a season of real giving. Christmas is a time of giving. And nobody likes to be able to receive a gift and not have anything to be able to return, you know, to be able to give of themselves in return. We all want to be able to give back. Amen? I mean, that's, you know, and I think nobody, uh, you know, is in a position who doesn't want to give. I think everybody wants to be able to give back. But if we think about it, God gave His Son to die for sinners. So if we were to give back something to the Lord, what would it be? Think about it. What would it be if you were to give back to the Lord today? All right? Um, we all have someone in our gift list that seems to have everything already, right? Do you have those people? They feel like, it seems like they have everything already. What do you give to those people who already have everything? They are hard to buy for. Well, <laughs> because you don't know what to give them. They have everything already. But think about it. What can you and I give to God? He doesn't need our money. He can get by without our talents or skills because he's the one who gives them to us. He doesn't need a fruit basket or a new tie or some pair of shoes or some handkerchiefs. <laughs> he doesn't need any of that. In fact, when you get right down to it, none of us really possess anything that we could give to him because we don't really own anything. You know, we came into this world empty, and we're going to go out of this world empty. We don't own anything. I mean, if you said, well, I own my house, well, you know, just stop paying taxes for a few years and you'll see if you still own it. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, uh, you say, well, I own my money. Well, you know, uh, let, the, the, let, let the economy crash and see if you still have it. Reality is we don't really own anything because God... Uh, brought us into this world without any clothes, we had nothing, and we're going to go without anything. You know what? The only thing that we have, that we have control over, is our soul. That's the only thing that you and I have. And so therefore, the only thing that we can give really to God that means something, is our soul. That we would give our lives to Him. As living sacrifices, not as dead people, but as living sacrifice while we're alive, that we could give to Him our lives, our soul. That's what we can give to Him. And I believe, you know, th that is the intent of this verse. If you look at this verse in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 to 37, look what it says. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? See, friends, what can we give 
in exchange for our soul. And it won't profit us anything. Now, we can gain everything, and that's the reason why it's not about us trying to gain whatever we can throughout this life. It's being able to have that relationship with God because He gave us already His best. So the question arises, is that have you really given your heart to the Lord? You know, I've been pastoring for over 20 years and I've, you know, I've, I've seen how, you know, we walk our lives and, and I've heard so many people say, you know, I love the Lord, you know, I, I, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you see how they live their lives, it's as if Jesus is never in their life. So the question really is, is have we really given our heart to God? Have we given our soul to the Lord? Because I found that there are still many who call, who say that they're Christians, who, who love God and say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, but actually their soul has been sold to the world. They still do their own thing, they still continue, and they forget that there is a God that loves them. They forget that there's a God that we need to worship and thank for, you know, uh, and, and they just go on doing their own thing, thinking, well, this is what God gave me. Praise the Lord and all that. But really, this, this is the season for giving. And it's giving our lives back to Him. Amen? Because He gave Himself to us. You know, and there is no better time than now to give it back to Him again. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says this. For He says, in the time of my favor... I heard you and in the day of salvation I helped you I tell you now is the time of God's favor now is the day of salvation there is no better time to give your heart to God there is no better time to uh, give your soul to him and 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 thank him for what God has given us this gift of eternal life this gift of salvation so really this is a season of giving not only that God gives to us and us giving back to the Lord our lives but also it's being able to give to one another amen the example that God gave us is by giving up Jesus he said love one another as I have loved you that kind of love was unconditional it was a kind of love that is sacrificial. It's a kind of love of giving up. It's not gaining. It's being able to give up. And so Jesus tells us that we are to love one another as I have loved you. And that means that if we were to be able to give love to one another, that this season that we remember what the Lord has done for us, that He gave up for us. It's giving up our own rights. And many times we're so... We're so, especially in a democratic country like Canada, we, we always think about our rights. It's what I'm entitled, what I, what I need to have. And we forget about what we need to be able to give out. <laughs> it's always about what we can get, what we can receive. But this season reminds us that it's about giving to one another. Giving love and giving out of our lives and giving up something uh, not being able not, not just to be able to receive and and get but giving up for God amen so this season of uh, this Christmas is a time for giving tell the person beside you give love this Christmas day amen because God gave his love to us through his son he gave he loved us so much that he gave up he didn't just send his son he gave up his son he gave up a great sacrifice for you and I and for us this season just remember this that it's a time for giving not only to receive and it's about giving up something for someone that we love Amen? Another thing that we see in the scripture is that Christmas is a time for good tidings. Good tidings or good news. The angel came with a message of 
good tidings. Or in another translation, the, the message of good news. Literally, this phrase, it comes from the word which we get our evangelize from. That's the phrase, actually. The, the good news of salvation, which is what we use as evangelize. That's the good news. You see, that was the message of the angel. The message was a message of salvation. He came to proclaim the glorious news that a Savior has been born in Bethlehem. And it's a message of hope. Tell the person beside you, there is hope. There is hope. And that should encourage every one of us today that there is a message of hope. That when Jesus came and that was declared by the angels, it was a message of salvation which gives hope to everyone. Because friends, without salvation, there is no hope. Are you hearing me? If God doesn't save us, there is no hope. But the reality is He came to give us hope through salvation in Christ. He came to proclaim, the, the angel uh, came to proclaim the glorious news that Savior had been born in Bethlehem. And that is a message of hope. You know that the shepherds, they were, they were social outcasts. They were considered unclean by the religion and they were typically dirty and uh, they were the type of man that no one wanted to be around. They were generally forgotten by their uh, by, by some elements of their society, but God did not forget them. You know, it's interesting and how wonderful it is that those, those men, those uh, wretched, sinful shepherds who gave their lives raising sheep for the temple courts, for temple services, were the first ones to be able to receive the good news of the Lamb of God that being born into the world. Wow, it was a message of hope. It really encouraged them. You know, they were, they were people that were for, forbidden from, from seeking God in the temple, but God brought salvation to them. And friends, the message hasn't changed. The environment has changed. Uh, things have changed, but the message of the gospel hasn't changed. The gospel is still a message of hope. Amen? There is hope. You may be one right now going through some very difficult times in your life. I want you to know there is hope. Maybe this year hasn't been good for you. All throughout this year, maybe one issue after another, difficulties, maybe you still ended up this month still with some problems in your life. I want you to know there is still hope in the Lord. The message is there is hope. That if we will give our lives to God, because He already gave His life to us. If we will give our lives to Him and remember that this is a message of salvation, that He saved us, and therefore there is hope. Because not only did He save us from our problems and our troubles, but He saved us from uh, 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 spending time of eternity in hell. I mean, that's, that should be good news. Amen. I mean, forget about the shopping and everything, the real, you know. Forget about all of those good things that we get, praise the Lord. But think about it. The greatest good news is the fact that you won't spend eternity in hell. That you have the great uh, gift of salvation. And friends, that's, that's a message of hope. Uh, you, 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 you and I maybe have committed some, you know, sins and you know, there may be some of us that have gone through uh, difficulties and you may feel that God wouldn't save you. You may feel that you have no hope. You may think that you're beyond the scope of God's saving power. Well, let me tell you this morning that the door of salvation is standing wide open for every one of us. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you, you are still going through, there's still the opportunity today to give our life back to God. In Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who needs rest? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. Some of you think, oh, I need it right now. 
<laughs> I could just go to sleep right now and get some rest. You know, the Lord offers to all of us that would come, those who are weary and we're burdened. We go through so many things in our life. There are living in this world is not free of challenges, crises, tragedies, trials, persecutions. It's not free of that. We, Jesus already said that there's going to be all of that. But he says, come to me. All of you, if you're weary, you're burdened, you're going through difficulties, you have no peace, he says, I will give you rest. Hopefully not rest in peace that we sing. <laughs> but he, he does give us rest. And really, the rest here is not talking about the physical rest. You know, we get tired, we rest. We call that rest. But he's really talking about rest for our souls. Do you know that gets burdened? It's your soul. You can have physical rest, but you're still burdened. Are you hearing me? You feel like you still have no rest. You know why? Because the rest that you need is the rest of your soul. Where you can find security in God where you can find peace in Him, where you can turn over everything to the Lord and say, God, I give you all my burdens, I give you all my cares. The Bible says, cast all your cares on Him, for He cares for you. So we care, we, we cast our cares for Him, all our burdens, we give it to Him, and He gives us rest. So friends, this is a time really for the good news. And that is good news, that we may... You know, in, in spite of all the bad news that we hear, we look at the, the television uh, news and all that, and we read the papers, and there's so much bad news. But in the midst of that bad news, there is the good news of hope. Amen? John 6, 37 says this, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Wow. What a powerful promise that the Lord will never drive us away. No matter what we have gone through, no matter how you, maybe we've gone away from the Lord for whatever reason, maybe we have tried to do our own things in our lives, the Bible still says to us that no, who, whoever comes to Him, no matter what we've done, He said, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. You see, because the love of God is not conditional. You can come to Him with everything that you've got. And He never refuses us. Amen? That's why today, we can still come to Him. We can offer our lives back to Him. You know, it's a time for realization of how we're living our lives. And we can say, God, you know, this is the time that Maybe because of the bu busyness of this season or because of maybe what I'm going through, sometimes I forget about you. And I forget that there is a God who cares for me. That I can run to God. You know, we run to so many different things. We, we run to maybe, uh, you know, places where we could get some temporary happiness and temporary peace. But that's not, that, that, that's not lasting. But when we run to God and we go to Him, we find an everlasting joy and the peace that passes all understanding. Amen? That kind of peace that you don't understand, but you have it. Why? Because you're with God. Others trying to find peace with other people and, you know, they, they, they allow others to try and, you know, do things in their life but, and they think that they can find peace that way. The only true peace that you, can, you and I can have is that peace that we have with God with Jesus Christ, who gives us peace. He's a wonderful counselor, prince of peace. Amen? And so today, let's be reminded that there is hope. That's a, the message of Christmas is a, is a time of good news, of good tidings. Not all the bad news. Here's the deal. If you're lost and you need a Savior, then know that Jesus is who you need. And just as the message was one of hope for those men that night. It is a message of hope for you and I this morning. It's a chance to begin life again. You know, especially as we 
you know, draw close to the end of this year, it's a good thing to be able to think about, you know, I can begin a new life with God. It's a good start again. It's an opportunity to have your sins washed away and start again all over. It's an opportunity to come to know God and assure yourself of heaven. Thank God there's still hope in the gospel. Amen? Tell the person once again, right beside you, don't know what they're going through. Just tell them there is hope. Don't give up. Don't give up. There is hope. I don't know what you're going through, but there is hope. Amen? That's good news for all of us. That's good news. Lastly, Christmas is a time for glorifying God. Christmas is a time for giving. Christmas is a time for good tidings. And Christmas is a time for glorifying God. After the first angel finished his speech, he was immediately joined by a visit a multitude of the heavenly host and they lifted their voices to give glory and praise to the Lord may I remind you that this Christmas along with Easter are tremendous times for the children of God to be able to demonstrate their faith if there was a time that you could demonstrate your faith this is the time you know there are some people who who say well you know uh, we're Christians and uh, we know Jesus is really not born on December 25th and all kinds of things that they say and say you know so we don't celebrate Christmas and I go you're crazy the best time to be able to share to the world and demonstrate your faith is Christmas where everybody is trying to find out what is really the meaning of Christmas and everybody's trying to uh, you know celebrate this is the time to be able to share your faith and demonstrate it that we may be able to glorify God in this time after all even though Christmas has been secularized and maybe commercialized it's still a, a day set aside to commemorate the birth of the King of Kings are you hearing me he still was born and, the, and, and this day has been set aside to commemorate that day. We will praise God. We celebrate that. And through our Christmas programs, our personal conduct, and family functions that we have, we have a wonderful opportunity to show this world just what this season is truly about. You know what is sad though? That instead of us being able to glorify God, this season becomes a stressful season and people fighting each other. Think about it. Families are all in conflict about, you know, who didn't bring what and who didn't give any gifts and what they're supposed to, mine is more expensive than their gift and, you know, are they going to bring anything for dinner or they don't bring anything or should we invite them or not invite them? I mean, think about it. This is actually should be a time to demonstrate our faith to glorify God. And as, and as true sons and mature sons in the house, we should reflect and represent God in this season. How are you reflecting God in your life, in your family? Are you fighting with the rest of your family or are you glorifying God? Are you giving to others like God has given us? Are we giving love or are we giving anger and hatred, unforgiveness? We need to give love and glorify God. Let us join our voices with those of the angelic host and declare the great glory of God. After all, it's our duty. You know what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31? This is really for Christmas. So whether you eat or drink, <laughs> whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen? I mean, you're eating, drinking, and all of this. And whatever you're doing, do it all for the glory of God. Don't do it just for the sake of having a Christmas dinner. Don't do it for just having, 
you know, being able to gather and have a party. Do it for the glory of God. And that way, your heart will be right. Your motive will be right. Then you'll be able to share the goodness of God. Because if we start in the wrong motive of what we're doing it for, then we will not be able to share the glory and testify about the good news. But praise God that the Word tells us that we are to give glory to the Lord. This world needs to know the true meaning of this season. You see, after the shepherds met, uh, met Jesus, this became their mission, to glorify God. They went about telling others about Him, the Bible says, and they returned to their lives glorifying the name of the Lord. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing to glorify the Lord this Christmas? That's a good question. What are you doing to glorify the Lord in your life this Christmas? I am sure that there are many other reasons for the season that we could find in the Word of God, but this stand to, rem to remind us that the greatest need for this season is for men to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So what does Christmas mean to you? I invite you to come to Him. If you have strayed in your walk with God, if you've strayed your walk with Him and need to come home, I invite you to come to Him. If there are areas in your life that you need to follow God in humble obedience, I invite you to come to Him. Whatever you need this morning, I, need, I, I invite you to come to the Lord Jesus and find all that you will ever need to meet your need. Jesus is the reason for this season. What does Christmas really mean to you? May these thoughts remind you of what this season is all about. Christmas is about giving Christmas is about the good news that there is hope and Christmas is about glorifying God. We may have secularized it, we may have commercialized it, and the world has done that. But we are the children of God. We are not just the world. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. So we're here to glorify God. Amen? You received that this morning? Will you stand today?